Yeah, Emily, I think Tom raised a good point. If you look at Tom Flynn, um, Thomas Flynn's comment in chats. Yeah, so my question was just with the increased activation that we've seen at McMichael Park and the opening of the play space in there, I wanted to call particular attention to the intersection of Midvale and Henry. We have multiple bus stops at that location, and there have been repeated accidents when cars have left the, si left the street and ended up on the sidewalk. Um, so I'm wondering, in the in the existing plan, is there anything in the in physically that would be done to reconstruct that intersection? Yes or no? And if yes. no, 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 I can. I I, I would say yes, and I can. You know, I'll let you finish. Let, your me, finish, let me finish the question. And I guess if the answer is no, um, might that be reconsidered, considering in in light of the increased utilization of the park? which has been an objective of the, of the community for a while. But if you look at the responses to the survey, people, a significant percentage of people are concerned about accessing amenities in the neighborhood because of fear of crossing intersections. And that one, I think, in particular, is the gateway to an amenity of the neighborhood. David, do you want to, you, you had an answer to that. And do you want to yeah. remind people also of, of what, who you are on this call as well? So they know. I'm, I'm, I'm with the streets department. I've been working with this project as long or longer than, you know, Pam has. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I've seen it. I lived up, up this way for, I lived on Midville by, uh, was it Frederick or Stanton or whatever it is for a little while as well. Um, but as far as Henry and Midville, the one major thing that's, that's going to happen there is that there's going to be a left turn lane and a left turn arrow. So I think part of what happens is, you know, you're coming down from 3900 block where there's speed. You have people who are trying to make a left turn. Uh, there's not a left turn lane, so you get rear-ended and you try to make some, uh, maybe some not great decision making when you're making that left turn. So, you know, there was a left turn there for a short bit for a detour, but now it's going to be there and, and permanent. Now, the other thing that's happening is with the left turn lane, you know, and what's there now is that the lanes especially on, you know, north of there are narrow, narrow. So, you know, when you get narrow lanes, just like you have on Kelly Drive, you get people driving close to each other and that creates additional crashes. So we're hoping that the arrow in the lane will, you know, at least reduce a, a good chunk of the crashes that, that have happened there. And uh, David, if I can jump in, I have a question. So you are saying that the addition of a left-hand turn southbound on Henry is going to be uh, sufficient enough to reduce the number of incidents of, of crashes. Is that correct? Well, just just like everything else. No, no, you know, I, I, I just want that question answered. Yes, no, naturally. I, okay, so let me. Nothing let me, is a silver bullet, so yes. Uh, I do. Uh, well, I I'm going to ask you a second question because there's already in existence a left hand turn northbound. Right? Right. Well, we're adding. The, well, no, 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 there's already a left-hand turn. You went on record as saying that the significant change to the intersection is going to be a left-hand turn southbound on Henry in response to Tom's question regarding incidents of collision and crashes. So yeah. I'd like to, again, ask you, how is that evidenced by the left-hand turn lane northbound there already? So the, the northbound left turn you know, gets relatively less use. Is and there there's data supporting high that? demand for the southbound left turn, just in the same way originally the project wanted to add a left turn lane and a left turn arrow onto Queen right. Lane, which which we persuaded them to avoid doing for reasons which I'm sure you, you can guess. Okay. okay, but David, my question is, is there data to support your point? Yes, they PennDOT would have why not hasn't that been but why wasn't that shared in the PennDOT plan? I did not see any data. No member of the committee saw data speaking to that point. I'm sorry, Ray. Data speaking to what point? I, I mean, I, their their plans are not His going to. David's response to Tom's question in regards to the level of incidence of collision, particularly in those collisions which result in vehicles exiting the street and ending up on sidewalks or people's lawns, David said the change is the addition of a, of a left-hand turn in the southbound lanes. So I'm simply asking, 
for proof of how that's going to reduce the kind of incidents that Tom mentioned. And why isn't that evidenced by the existence of a left-hand turn in the northbound lanes? So you have to look, you know, so when PennDOT and we, I mean, obviously we reviewed the, the study and we saw where the crash, what direction cars were traveling in when they got into these collisions. So why isn't that data evident? Why isn't that data presented on the PennDOT plans? I mean, this, this goes to the heart of why we're, we had issues with PennDOT's plan. And also, as Tom pointed out, the big change since 2017 is the addition of the play space in McMichael Park, which many people will attest that there is a remarkable increase in foot traffic to that park from all points. So we have many more pedestrians crossing Henry Avenue, walking along Henry Avenue, some families used to drive. So there's more traffic both on foot and as well as vehicle to this amenity in the community. And the survey sh shows that people have reservations about their safety when moving about in the community. All we're asking for is some data. And, and again, and to, and, um, to um, Pam's um, uh, explanation uh, or, uh, of, the, uh, of the plan, we made it very clear in our document to Pam that there were, yes, there are parts of the plan that, yes, we give them a round of applause because they comport with world-class standards of traffic calming. For example, the raise to planned and hopefully still planned raised intersection at Henry and Schoolhouse Lane, the high friction surface on the 3900 block of Henry Avenue, which is going to do a lot of things. But then when we see South of Coulter and PennDOT's plans specifically state the addition of more posted speed limits, radar flashing signs just to tell people, oh, by the way, you're going over 35, and painting of speed limit in the travel lane, very much like what's already on Lincoln Drive when you come off the City Avenue Bridge, right in the middle of the lanes, it's, it's painted 25 miles per hour. And trust me, nobody tra travels so, 25 miles So Ray, if, if, if no, I may, again, day, I'm... If I may finish, that's what the committee was asking for. We want the data, the studies that show that that part of the plan the signs, the painting of, 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 of the, the sign, the posted signs of the speed limit, the painting of the speed limit in the travel lane. How effective are they? Where's the data that shows the number of in, the incidence rate dropping to a statistically significant level where they can then deem the, the, the then deem the street safer for travel? So let's let David. Do you have an answer? Do you have a response oh, for that? I mean, I I mean, I can respond certainly that number one, I'm not PennDOT, so I can't say what or wasn't in a plan, but you know, the Federal Highway Association looks at various traffic interventions and the level, the, 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 the overall level of reduction in crashes or the overall level of increase in safety on a street based on various interventions. The two things, one, the left turn arrow is in there and it is an incremental increase in safety when these things are added. And two, when we look at the data of how each of the crashes have happened, and if this would have helped or mitigated those individual crashes that we saw on Henry Avenue, we deemed that to be that, that left turn arrow not and left turn lane is, is two different things, would, you know, would have prevented a, a substantial number of the crashes that have happened over the time that was spent. Would you be able to provide the committee and this, and this community council with, with uh, projections of what would be expected drop in incidents? David, I'll, I'm happy to, Ray, I'm happy to get uh, contact PennDOT for their projections and for any data that are behind what I believe are generally accepted process and procedures for um, streets and, and highways. There aren't standards that govern this. Y you know, what can be applied and what, what can't or shouldn't be applied. Yeah. Uh, you know, I myself am not an engineer, but 
We can, Caroline is on the call for my staff as well. We can send requests in for projections for any type of projection that may exist for anticipated reductions in accidents. And we can also ask for, if you're specifically looking for any data behind the left-hand turn southbound at Midvale and Henry, uh, the rhyme and reason for that, we can also submit that question. I've got a raised hand from Sarah from the Bicycle Coalition. Well, oh, I, someone else after her. Hi. Um, so the a lot of the streets that were talked about in the survey are um, described, I think, maybe in the presentation early on, were, were streets other than um, Henry Avenue, Fox, Roberts, Midvale. Fox and Roberts are on the high injury network, which means they should get more attention um, than, than streets that are not. Interestingly enough, Midvale is not on the high injury network. This is streets that have been identified as um, being responsible for 80% of the fatalities and, and um, severe injuries in the city. So they're, this is data, data showing that these are the most important streets that really need to be targeted. Henry, of course, is one of them. So um, I think there's a lot to think about and talk about with respect to um, what kinds of traffic calming could be done on Fox and Roberts or other corridors or blocks that, um, you know, where in the, especially recently there have been any increase in, in incidents. Um, but I will say this and sort of wearing my advocacy hat is that the streets department unfortunately has very little resources available for traffic calming. It has some, but not enough. And, um, and I really regret to say that um, for the past month and a half, I've been working on the budget, advocating for more resources for the streets department, specifically for things like speed cushions and et cetera. And I don't, I don't think, and not successfully, unfortunately. And this is where your committee and your folks really need to talk to Councilman Jones, talk to the mayor, um, really make it clear that the streets department needs more more ammunition to come in and deal with these kinds of problems. Um, and, um, and turning around requests in a year, I will say, is um, very, very difficult. Um, but so you, there's a, there is an important role for you to play, which is to really heighten that this, these issues are, are, are terribly important and need to be prioritized. And that's, that's where your elected officials come in. And Sarah, I would add to your comment that we hear this discussion at the federal level on an infrastructure bill. I mean, the state general assembly passed an infrastructure bill in November of 2013. I remember it very specifically. I can even tell you the date uh, because it had been almost 15 or 16 years since we had done any type of infrastructure bill because it's fraught with increases in taxes and other things. Um, so we didn't get an infrastructure bill out of the previous federal administration, even though it was very much anticipated. This administration is pushing hard and early. If you've tuned into the news at all, you heard through the weekend discussion about an, infra an infrastructure bill. And both Sarah and David, correct me if I'm wrong, if that infrastructure bill goes through at the federal level, is it going to put speed, is it going to have a line item in there for speed cushions on Midvale? Of course not. But it's going to have a ripple effect on how money is used at the state level and then at the local level. It will free up money. So local money can be used for these much more local issues. State money, can we can plan on the bigger issues and maybe uh, add more things into safety improvement plans because the federal dollars will be there to support that. That's how I see that unfolding, and um, we need it desperately. So when you're contacting elected officials, don't forget your congressman. And ours is Dwight Evans, who I suspect is extremely supportive of this particular topic and issue. So, but start start with the U.S. You know, our two U.S. senators, our one congressman, and then you know we wrap up locally with uh, the councilman.